8 says, Their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. You know, it just occurred to me that three people are murdered um, at the great city, Jerusalem. The two witnesses and Jesus Christ. It just occurred to me that all three of those were murdered there in Jerusalem. And um, when I look at verse 11, after three days and a half, I think of the three years and a half a year. And maybe that is some kind of link to that. After three days and a half, the spirit of life from God, look at that. God's own spirit, just like he breathed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life and Adam became a living soul. The spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, just like Jesus did. Oh, I like this. In a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And the same hour, there was a great earthquake. Now think about Jesus. The same hour that he died, there was an earthquake in Jerusalem. And uh, the ground opened her mouth, the Bible says. So there was a great earthquake. And the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake, earthquake were slain of men, 7,000 men. Now that is quite a lot of men. Uh, by the way, I'm, I've got my mind and my heart on all the folks out in North Carolina. Man, it's bad out there. I, like I say, I didn't really consider this hurricane i didn't think about it much because i just don't watch very much news at all but we've been hearing some things and uh what people are testifying um that the people that we have charged with helping situations just like this are not helping situations like this and um you can never tell just how true things are but when you've got all of the people saying the exact same thing it makes you wonder. So pray for the people of North Carolina. Pray for all of those who uh, have been injured or damaged by this flood, uh, by this hurricane, uh, because it is a serious, serious issue. People have already died, and um, they're saying that in places where the water has receded, the smell is that of human bodies decaying I can't fathom that but I'll tell you this when God decides to do something no man can stop it and you say well is this of God it's weather who is it that controls the weather is it the government that's what some people think but it's God and for whatever reason God sent this or he allowed it to happen and uh, it should be just a wake-up call to the rest of the country uh, of God saying this is what I can do to the entire nation I believe God can send hurricanes from the east hurricanes from the west and just devastate the entire nation God can do that and uh, when we look in the book of Revelation, there, there are things there that that's what we see. But anyway, back at the ranch, um, verse 13 again, In the same hour there was a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted. And look at this, and gave glory to the God of heaven. Amen? Because that's what happens. Whenever God poured out his wrath upon the Israelites when they were in the wilderness, the ones that died, the ones that lived and watched them die, all of them said, we're on God's side. Moses, 
Tell God we're on his side because it scared them. When, when the ground opened up and swallowed, um, uh, who was it? Yeah, Korah. Ground opened up, swallowed up Korah and all of those people. Um, I was thought you were bringing me batteries. But anyway, when he swallowed up all those people, everybody else said, uh-oh, we better, we better get on God's side. We better get on Moses' side. And, and that's what they did. It scared them what, it, what they saw. And so this is what's going on here. The remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, look at, verse, look at verse 9 and 10 again. They of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations. When they see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Verse 10, they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts to one another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. Now there's some speculation about this and I don't really like to get into speculation. I do like to, however, get into scripture and if you want to turn to Proverbs 2, I would encourage you to do so. Maybe you might read something here that uh, I'm not seeing and, and, and bring it out to the class this morning. Or you might see what I see and underline it and put a note in your Bible. This could be related to the Revelation chapter 11. Uh, I like to, along with the notes that the Bible publishers put in my Bible... I like to put my own notes in the Bible. And mom, you couldn't have gotten me a better Bible than this one right here. Because it doesn't have any commentary in, in it or anything like that. But what it does have is in the middle, uh, middle column there is all the biblical references to what, what I'm reading here. So I'm reading in book of Proverbs chapter 2. And there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 different references to various things in Proverbs chapter 2. And we get called a lot from people who are wanting to know what kind of Bible to get. So I say, first of all, King James. Yeah, and then secondly, uh, I tell them, uh, get a reference Bible. A Bible that's going to have references in the middle column or references somewhere there on the page. Because scripture is interpreted by scripture. And uh, so I, I have used that middle column more than one time. But in Proverbs chapter 2, you look at verse 10. And it says, When wisdom entereth into thy heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee. And that's what we're going to be uh, preaching on this morning is understanding, biblical understanding. Verse 12, to deliver thee from the way of the evil man. The evil man here is the Antichrist. That's who that is. From the man that speaketh froward things. Froward is the opposite of two word. Two, when somebody speaks two word words to you, I'm trying to get you toward heaven. When they speak froward things, they're trying to get you from, away from heaven. That's what froward things are. If, um, let's say that there's a, I don't know, a teenager, and they're going to church, they're going to Sunday school, they're trying to live for the Lord, and they've got a friend, and that friend is not saved, doesn't even go to church, that friend, more often than not, is going to speak froward things to that teenager, whether it be a boy or a girl. He is, the devil's going to use him to try to speak things to that teenager that would draw them away from the authority of their parents, draw them away from the Word of God, draw them away from their love for Sunday school and church. And that's generally how it happens. Because we're, we're raising children in church nowadays, but by the time they reach 18, there's always somebody there trying to draw them out and draw them away. There's a family that follows our ministry that I, I think I've mentioned this before, but 
this family's, the, the children's own grandmother was trying to lure this man's two daughters into being lesbians. The grandmother was. And uh, I'm just like, Phew. So anyway, that happens. Verse 13, who lead the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice to do evil. And to, look, look at this. Here's the verse that I was focusing on. Verse 14, they rejoice to do evil. These, uh, all the people of the earth, of the world, they dwell upon the earth and shall rejoice over them and make merry. That's the people who rejoice to do evil and delight in the frowardness of the wicked. They're, they're being froward. Verse 15, whose ways are what? Look at that, like a snake. They're not following the straight path of Christ. They're following the crooked path of the devil. And they froward in their paths. To so here you are walking toward heaven. And they're speaking froward things to you. And they're getting you to go backwards away from heaven. They froward in their paths. To deliver thee from the strange woman, even the stranger which flattereth with her words, which forsaketh the guide of her youth, and forgetteth the covenant of her God. For her house inclineth unto death, and her paths unto the dead. None that go unto her return again. Neither take they hold of the paths of life, that thou mayest walk in the way of good men, and keep the paths of the righteous. For the upright shall dwell in the land, and the perfect shall remain in it. But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth, and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. You know, what, you know what you do when you root something out? What do you do, Brother George? You dig down. You don't just pull it from the top. That doesn't do it. You take something and you dig down underneath that thing and you make sure you pull up all of them roots from that thing or it's going to grow back. And that's what he's doing. He's not just plucking them off. He is uprooting them pulling up roots and all so that they never, ever, ever come back again. Now, oh, I like this. Turn to Psalm 50 since you're in Proverbs. <laughs> you could be in 2 Thessalonians, I'd say. Turn to Psalm 50 since you're in 2 Thessalonians. Boy, we had a good time this weekend. We really did. Good church, sort of very, very similar to this church here. Very similar. Good pastor, good man of God, good family he's got. He's got two boys that, um, two twin boys, they were teenagers, and they both were just tickled to death that I was there. And the first day we showed up there, both of them said, w will you do the thing on, on DNA and like, do the thing like you do on the body and the, and the cells and, and, uh, and uh, the uh, Levite priest. And I was wondering why they were saying that. Both of them had type 1 diabetes. And uh, they knew that I had type 2. And they said, do that thing on insulin that you do. And, I, and I'm going, okay, I will, I will. And uh, so I did it for them. They were excited about it. That's something to see young people excited about somebody who's going to come bring them the Word of God. I like that when I see it. And doesn't, it's not always pastor's kids that does it either. And I like that. Psalm 50 verse 5. Gather my saints together unto me. Think about these two witnesses. Think about us being gathered to Jesus. Gather my saints together unto me. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The covenant that we made with Christ is not the Mount Sinai covenant. That covenant is done away in Christ. So the covenant that you and I uh, are drawn to Christ with by sacrifice is the new covenant. And it's not by the sacrifice of a lamb. It's by the sacrifice of a lamb. The Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. 
And the heavens shall declare his righteousness, for God is judge himself. Selah, which means pause and think about it. That's what the word music means. When you muse on something, you are pondering it. You're giving time to think about things and think things through. All of us have made hasty actions and decisions in our life. And they usually end up hurting us. But when we actually take the time to pause and think about our actions, that's, that's showing that you've got wisdom. And the verse 6, And the heavens uh, shall declare his righteousness, for God is judge himself. Selah, hear, hear, O my people, and I will speak, O Israel, and I will testify against thee. I am God, even thy God. I will not reprove thee for thy sacrifices or thy burnt offerings to have been continually before me. I will take no bullock out of thy house, nor he goats of thy folds. I mean, look at what God is saying here. I don't want your bulls. I don't want your he goats. Um, verse 10, for every beast of the forest is mine and, every, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. He's already got it. You don't, you're not giving anything to God that he doesn't already have. So he says, uh, verse 11, For I know all the fowls of the mountains and the wild beasts of the field are mine, and if I were hungry, I like this passage. God says, if I were hungry, I would not tell thee. So don't think that you're giving something to God that he needs or that he desperately wants and got to have. You're not doing that. God doesn't need it. And if he was hungry, which he never does get hungry, but if he was hungry, he wouldn't tell us. So he says, um, verse 13, I, Will I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. Now, I wanted to get to this before time ran out this morning. In Revela back in Revelation chapter 11, verse 14, the second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Does anybody know what song has those words in it? I'm about to show you. Thank you for ruining it for the class. Handel's Messiah. We're going to get cultured this morning. I want you to hear this. Oh, come on. I want you to hear this. And I'm going to put the scriptures up on the screen if I can. And I hope, I hope we have sound here. Oh. Revelation 19.6 Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Alleluia. We're still in Revelation 19, 6. The Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Now they're going to sing Revelation eleven fifteen. The kingdoms of this world.
when um, when I was um, playing this last night and putting the scriptures there in PowerPoint, I was weeping. There is a reason why King George of England, upon hearing this for the first time, stood up. And you look at the words, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. King George was just an earthly king. Jesus was king of kings. And then the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. All of the earthly nations, they all belong to Jesus. When the devil, when the devil said to Jesus, all these kingdoms will I give thee if you bow down to me. I can just see Jesus laughing in his face. It's like, I don't need your permission. They're mine anyway. And I'm going to take them. And he shall reign forever and ever. I was doing what Brother George is doing. I was just bawling last night. Late, real late last night. I was tired anyway. And when I get tired, I get emotional. And uh, I thought, you know, I'm going to play that for our church. There is, in my opinion, no greater union of scripture and music than Handel's Messiah. And no greater example of that whole, it's a two and a half hour, it's not opera, by the way. It's not opera. It's a, uh, what they call an oratorio. And um, there is no greater um, Example of the entire Handel's Messiah than the Hallelujah Chorus because it comes right out of Scripture. They're using the words, and I, forgive me because I forgot to put Revelation 19, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, but I think you know that one. All right, let's, uh, let's close this out in prayer, and uh, I can't top that, and I don't want to. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, uh, for the majesty and the glory of the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we bow in the presence of our Lord and we are in awe of His majesty and we can't even see it in its totality right now. All we can see is what you have supplied for us in the scriptures and what you have given to us in, in song. And God, I... God, I may be wrong, but I think that you led the hand of George Handel to write out this song the way it is. It's absolutely beautiful, it is majestic, and it is the earth's vain attempt at offering our very best praise to your name. Father, we know that all of our praise throughout eternity would be insufficient to truly call out and praise your name. But Lord, we intend to do it for eternity. Thank you, God, for reigning in our hearts. Thank you, God, for reigning in our lives and in our families. And Father, we look forward to the day when Jesus comes to reign here on this earth. It will be majestic and it will there's no doubt god it will replace the hallelujah chorus thank you god for your word in jesus name and amen